Hi everybody, Nige back here again and I've got another inbox review for you today and today for me is I think it's something a little bit special. So we're going to be able to look at Airfix's brand new tool Western Sea King. Okay, so the this was a, a surprise addition to Airfix's uh line. Uh, it wasn't even uh mentioned uh last last year you know at Telford or anything like that so it's all brand spanking new brand new tool uh from a quick glance of what i've been seeing online it looks like it's absolutely fantastic now some people will be disappointed with the color options uh sorry the, the marking options but for me it you know it, it sort of makes sense because it goes through the ages okay plus there's potential for others these obviously the um the yellow one these the ref one and all that sort of stuff so hopefully they will be coming out in the near future so without much further ado we will get onto the overhead and we'll get straight into it so as normal we start with the instructions okay i'll just put them out of the way and this now is a norm for Airfix kits. Okay, so I've got an A5 booklet. Okay, with a little bit of write up in English, French, and uh, German. Okay, uh, and then we'll just go through. So it's got the rotor diameter. Okay, is 397 millimeters, and the length is 460 millimeters. Okay, so the four different schemes with two build options so with this you've got to know which one you want to build which will go through the uh, the markings in a minute okay so straight off straight into it we open up and we can see we have got oh we've got another spanish and i don't know what the sv is so i'm not even gonna uh, guess at it okay but then we've got the uh, assembly instructions uh, icons and straight before, you need to know which one you're building, whether you're doing the HS1, the HS5, or the HU5, okay? So you need to know where you're going to be drilling out certain holes for different parts, okay? So we've got what looks like the main cabin area, okay? So we've got bottom view and top view. We then move on to... The two sidewalls and again we've got the different ones for the different markings so one two three four okay again drilling them all out we've then got what looks like the the belly of the aircraft okay and again one two three four uh, different marking options we're removing parts uh, and what have you, file them off and pouring drill holes in and so forth. We then move straight into the build sequence. So starting with the cabin, okay, we've got the forward bulkhead, which goes on. And as you can see, it's got some bits where you paint. Uh, and later on, you'll see they'll show you how bits go together and they'll do it red. Like, and that say, yes, you've already done this and so forth. So one, two, three, four, five. 10 parts on this all dealing with what looks like the forward cockpit and the pilot and co-pilot seat uh, with the bulkheads and what have you on there all call outs are in humbro okay it's just what airfix does and then again moving on to adding the actual seats into the cockpit area we've then got the central console of the actual aircraft okay we then move on to the uh, dashboard or instrument panel okay which then goes in then we have a cover that goes on the nose and then we start looking at some more of these seats okay uh, i don't know which parts of these for hopefully it'll show me in a minute Okay, so yeah, we've got some more, more seats going on there. We move it on to what looks like maybe uh, a radar or radio operator's part uh, going through until these are built up. I don't really know what they are. 
Moving on to again what looks like something to do with ah that's to do with a winch. So that bit there, that's the winch. Okay, going on to the actual aircraft. We've got, got another console going in. Before then we move on to the seats that go down either side of the aircraft. Did they go down either side? I can't remember. I'm trying to remember. I've been in a Sea King and I can't remember whether the seats go down one side or they go down both sides. I'm sure it'll come to me in a bit once we have a look at the actual aircraft itself. So yeah, so this is again building all this winch and radiator parts. Oh yeah, it is the one side. The reason I was confused because obviously I've been in, in Chinooks, I've been in Wessex, uh, Lynxes, Pumas. Um, I've even been in the F uh, in a, a Gazelle uh, when I was when I was in the army. Okay, so I've been in plenty of helicopters, and sometimes they all get a little bit muddled up. Okay, we then look at building this main cabin area with more bulkheads. Okay, drilling some more holes out, and then joining the two fuselage halves together. And that's just the internal of the fuselage halves. So it's not actually the outer skin, that's the inner skin. Before we then moving on to putting this spine on and then doing the two side parts of the fuselage, adding some more lumps and bumps, some more buttons, it's the engine exhaust, okay. Whereas again, in this part, see it's right, it says do not glue. Uh, I believe that is to facilitate these engine uh, nozzles actually fitting through these holes just here. Okay, where you can see it goes on. Okay, making sure it goes through the hole just there. And then we've got some more parts going in before we actually close up the full fuselage. Again, we've got the belly plate which we go, it tells us to remove some parts, okay, which we already looked at. Uh, and then some clear parts going on to the nose, some hatches, okay. Um, the belly part, okay, so there's probably going to be a later version for this plug section here. We've then got the top of the engine deck going in. Some more grates and grills, uh, the front part of the air, 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 the engine intakes going on, okay, just there, and then them slotting together with another plate on the top. Then we've got this spine that fits over this rail here, so hopefully you won't have to get rid of any seam line because that'll go on there. Uh, removing a part if needed for A's, B's, or C's, okay. Then we've got the the radar on the back. Then looking at putting the nose on and then we move on to uh, the wheel uh, housing. Okay, so these are the little outriggers for this aircraft. Okay, so we're looking at building the actual nacelles for the wheels. And also the, the strut that comes out from them. Okay, so we've got plain view just there, and then the strut going on. We've then got where we want to build. Let's have a look. So you can build it up and down. So you can see we've got the different layouts just there. And then we can build it with the undercarriage actually down, as you can see on this page. We then got this tail. Okay, now this tail can be molded either folded or extended like so. Okay, so you get the two separate parts, a plugging part to actually help it sit in there and then the other part to actually depict it all folded like that. We've then got all the glazing going in. Uh, the different parts that go in front of the uh, air intake. Uh, what I believe one of the one of the aircraft doesn't have any sort of box on the front, and then the other ones B, C, and D all have different versions. Starting to look like a Sea King now. 
Okay, now we've got some more glazing to go on, some more little parts, little clear parts. Then again, some more uh, pit of tubes, some more little panels going on, little uh, veins. Okay, as you can see, all the way around, little vents and grills. Okay, for all the different aircraft. So we've got, I'll just go back one. We've got A, B, C and D. Uh, we then move on to adding some more parts. So for this is for D, again, you can see some extra little um, sensors. Uh, we have a winch going on for A, C and D. Okay, just there, like so. And there we can have the either doors open or close. We have a boarding ladder, okay, for the pilots um, to get in and out. And then we can have a look at the building up the tail rotor, which looks fairly simple, really, as tail rotors go. As you can see, it's only two parts, so hopefully, touch wood, that goes in okay. And then we've got the main rotor. And again, this can be built either extended or deployed or folded. And as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of parts to this. Okay, but there's the folded version. And then we put all the blades actually on, on there. And then what will look like when it's fully done. Then move on to the marking options. So like I said, there are four marking options. So let's start with marking A. So A, number eight, 802, uh, 826 Naval Air Squadron. Okay, Royal Air, Naval Air Station, Cool Rolls, Cornwall, 1970. So an all over navy blue. Then we've got the uh, B scheme. Okay, so this is number eight, 814 Naval Air Squadron, Cornwall again, 1988. And that's your all over uh, camouflage, uh, camouflage grey with dark sea grey and uh, medium sea grey on there. And you do get some of the uh, British standards on there as well. Moving on to... C, so 771 Naval Air Squadron, again Cornwall in England 1995 and again you've got some of this medium sea grey and camouflage grey but with a dash of colour with the, the red and the different types of roundels. Before we move on to uh, early operations, Portland, Dorset, England 2022. So what is actually depicting within this, this kit is one aircraft for its whole life cycle. Okay, so from 1977 all the way through to 2022, it's the same airframe. Okay, and that's what they've done. All that's been happening, it's been upgraded from time to time up until the, the newer marking. So it's great that they've done that. And like I said, looking at some of the actual instructions i can see some of the later versions coming online very soon so let's get straight into the plastic so airfix decided to give us these massive flaming bags okay and then we can move straight into the plastic so in this first bag okay we have some of the parts and you can see we have got the uh, nacelles for the wheels and some other parts. What I do like is it, it's the harder grey plastic and not the bluey grey plastic. So this is going to be work a lot better. I like how they've done this E here. So you can see straight away the sprue that you have got. Okay. And looking at this, I've actually got some what looks like it's sort of moulded like stretched um, metal, okay? So bulged on there and it's got full of rivets. Okay, now there was a big hoo-ha about this that the rivets weren't small enough or anything like that. The problem with that, if they went to town and went really, really rivets all over this, it'd be, you know, it'd be a total rivet fest and 
it'd just, it just be too much. So they've got to draw the line somewhere. And looking at it, the rivets don't look too bad. Okay. Uh, I can't see them being too big. Uh, and to be quite honest, I think they will pop once the actual uh, aircraft is built up. We then have some instrument panels. And again, we've got separate dials. We've got the spine there, the nose section, okay? And some other uh, doors and what have you. And then we've got part of the undercarriage, okay? All looks really nice to me so far. We've then got a smaller part. Again, with some of the sensors, some of the part for the internal. We have another... Uh, instrument panel just there and again it all looks really nice really sharp molding i can't really see much wrong with it if i'm honest perhaps maybe this part here uh, a lot of uh, uh, manufacturers might have done that in clear so you can uh, get you know do those those glass glazing there in clear so, but you could probably fill that out and actually fill that with some crystal clear or something like that next brew we have the belly plate okay part of the nose and part of the rear rotor another spine just here and then we're moving into some of the seats and as you can see hopefully they have got um they look like fabric which is what they're meant to look like we which is really really good okay we have got some again dial dashboards picking these out would be really really nice we've got some screens just there and then the, again on this belly plate okay the roof tin looks actually really nice on it okay and yeah it's the same so on the seeking the plates of this this belly section actually do overlap so you can see one there one there one there and one there okay so they all overlap each other we've then got this uh tail rotor and i'm just looking at it i can't see any imperfections i can't see any uh jets of pin marks we've got the back of one of the uh part of the actual bulkheads and again it's fabric like it was on the real aircraft so again really nice next one we have got again the seats with the a uh, taut factory, uh, fabric look we have the tail main tail and the horizontal stabilizers some parts of the engine okay the no another section of the nose and again some instrument clusters and what have you so i'll just run around this and again i can't see any injects pin marks where they don't need to be i'm going to swap it over so all these parts are going to be on the back side anyway we've then got the rotors so you've got the two types okay the one that's got this uh, 45 degree angle and the one that's got a long 90 degree with a small 45 degree angle and then we've got another tail rotor okay part of the road section so we've got the extended and the folded and the other parts and again it's looking really really nice yes there's going to be some cleanup okay for these tabs here but i'd rather have them than try and have to get rid of injected pin marks where or push marks wherever you want to call them where i can't really deal a great deal with them sorry about that Bit's just broken off, okay. So, so the main part the fuselage, okay.
okay and again it all looks really really nice yeah it's plated like it should be okay so you can see these these plates just here okay they actually overlap they don't butt up to each other i can't see any sink marks it's all sharply molded okay there shouldn't be too much on the inside because that gets covered with that internal framing which we're going to look at in a minute then we've got the cabin floor okay the spine that goes over the top of these internal parts all right so these internal parts as you can see there are just pin marks all, all along it i mean they will not be too hard to deal deal with and as i suppose you can expect with it being something this big though i would hope that they would have got cleaned up a bit better maybe we've got the wheels so no weight on wheel uh four 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 uh for main so two either side and then the tail wheel and then we've got the the doors and one of the bulkheads just there That leads us on to the clear parts. Sorry, I forgot to open this one. Okay, two different types. <clears throat> one with wiper blades, one without. But they are all, it is all crystal clear can't see any issues with it whatsoever that leads us on to the last part is the decals now normally um if it's decals are done by cartograph and i am not doubting that these are as well these are all in perfect register look really really nice and they should bed down lovely nice and nice and thin really nice indeed so there we are there's airfix's brand new seeking <clears throat> and you actually get quite a lot of plastic there for about 50 pound okay um i wouldn't really say it's much more than that it's got a lot of detail on the actual uh, plastic itself the clear parts are super clear and the decals look absolutely fantastic i can't really fault them at all so a really really welcome really nice looking release by airfix and i believe it builds up quite well uh which it probably will get built on the channel this one's mine okay so keep an eye out for that anyway that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.